they actually said Jesus wasn't talking anymore because he wrote the Bible. And he's, so he's done talking. And I was so depressed about that. I thought, man, I wish I lived when Jesus was alive, when he was walking down the path, of, you know, the road of life along with people. Like, and and uh, he was doing miracles and he was doing healing and he was speaking and there were dreams and there were visions. And, and instead of, instead I live in this church age, which they tell me none of this stuff happens. So I guess I'm going to call it the dumpster age where nothing happens. And, and I found that very, very depressing. And, and I wasn't even sure I agreed with it. And ultimately I did not agree with it. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I hungered to hear God's voice, I really hungered because um, I mean, I went to the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. They all heard the voice of God. Abraham did. God said, you know, see how many stars there are here. Are. There's a vision for you. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have that many kids. So that's his voice and his vision, which inspired faith in the father of faith and brought forth a miracle, which brought transformation to the world. And you go to the other end of the Bible, Revelation, you got 22 chapters of vision and God speaking. So from one end of the Bible to the other, God is speaking, people are hearing, they're being transformed, and all I'm saying is, I want that. I want that, okay? And, uh, and it took me 10 years to get it. I couldn't believe it took me 10 years. I mean, I rejected the idea that God wasn't speaking because there's a very clear voice. My sheep hear my voice, all right, and John, all right? So I knew that wasn't true. So I asked people, well, how do you hear God's voice? They said, well, you just know that you know. I said, no, <laughs> no. No, I don't know that I know. That's why I'm asking you, how do you hear God's voice? I said, well, it's like a still small voice. I said, well, I'm listening inside my head and there's no still small voices. I mean, I have thoughts, but there's nothing that I would identify as a voice. So I know that's a biblical phrase, still small voice, but I don't seem to have one of those things. So that doesn't help me either. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do what my church taught me to do. If you read more scripture, that should solve everything. So I read through the New Testament in three days, which is, um, I think it was a day and a half or the weekend, actually. And so how long it takes to read through the New Testament. And I went to my prayer closet, asked God to speak, and I, I couldn't hear, I could not identify a voice. And I thought, huh, well, that was supposed to work. You know, you read enough scripture, that's supposed to solve everything. So I tried uh, fasting because I, I, I was told that works too. So way back then in my 20s, I did a 40-day fast because I was really, really, I really wanted Christianity to work. Because if it's real, I want it to work. And if it's not real, fine, I'm going to go find what is real. So 40-day fast was good because I did lose a bunch of weight. And that was one of my goals as an adult is to lose weight. Uh, I had two goals. One is to be spiritual. One is to lose weight. I, I definitely lost the weight through the 40-day fast. I was very happy about that. But I listened for a voice. I still couldn't hear a voice. And I thought, huh, that was supposed to work. So I went to Bible college. Had a four-year degree, they said I was spiritual, so I went to my prayer closet, asked God to speak. I couldn't hear a voice. So, you know, I went through 10 years of, of depression because I thought all of these things that I just described to you should have worked, and none of them worked, which, so I got great news for you. You don't need to try any of those things because <laughs> I already tried them all, and I already proved they don't work, so I can save you a lot of time. Between 15 and 25, I backslid at least three times over this and said, God, look, I, I've had it. it. doesn't work. I'm quitting. I quit for three days and say, you know what? Life's not worth, worth living without Jesus. So I'd come back and <laughs> I would give Jesus one more chance to prove he was actually there, you know, which I'm sure made his whole day in heaven to know I had given him one more chance, you know? So it was a long haul for me, but it doesn't have to be a long haul for you. We, I, can, I had a thought come to me. I, got, I woke in the morning, one morning. Well, I had a thought come to me. Why don't you spend a year of your life learning to hear God's voice? <laughs> now, when I say I had a thought come to me, I could ask you, where do you think that thought came from? Why don't you take a year of your life to learn to hear God's voice? See, that was actually God speaking to me, telling me to do that. I didn't, and it came as a spontaneous flowing thought, which is the way we're going to define God's voice. We're going to define God's voice in a moment with scripture as spontaneous flowing thoughts that light upon your mind. But even though I didn't know it was God's voice, I thought, well, you know what? I spent 10 years in diffused effort, didn't get through. If I spent one year in focused effort and got through, that'd be a great year of my life. So I said, yeah, I think maybe I'll just do that, you know, because I really want Christianity to work. I really do. I, and I want it to be real. I don't want it to be a feed or a, a, a creed or a theology. I mean, every religion has a creed and theology. I want a living encounter with a living God because that's what Christianity promises. 
and 